Woof woof! Hey guys, no, don't worry, there's no issue with the video. I just realised how bad the recording was when it was coming through the camera itself, so I thought I didn't want that to be the video that came out, and I thought I'd do a voiceover instead. But this is a video that I've been saying that I was going to do for a while, and of course it is my 2021 edition of the Dog Pound. Yes, I am going to give you a full tour of my comic room. So we're just going to do a quick once over here. We've got the manga on the top shelf there, which as you probably know, is definitely not mine. We then go into the first calyx, which is mostly D. DC books. Obviously we're going to go a bit more in depth when we go through the entire room tour but this is just a little bit of a once over. There are some books on the floor here, some library editions. I hate that as well. I'm going to explain the situation as we go along but that's where they are at the moment. Then we move into my trade paperbacks right here. One of the big billies pretty much in the corner of the room where my desk used to be but like I said we'll get into that a bit later in the video. And as you probably know if you've watched any of my previous videos before and it's probably featured in the majority of them now, this is my main calyx so it's built up of a 2x4 and also a 4x4 but on top we've got all my DC absolutes then we get into my image books and also my Marvel omnibuses along with the majority of the figures that I've got in the room. So starting off with the manga we have got the Legend of Zelda collector's edition at the top which is all of the hardcover volumes and it's also got like a little voice chip in it so that when you open it it makes a noise from the video game. I got that for Shadow Cat for a birthday last year. We've also got the Legend of Zelda Breath of the wild super duper fancy collector's edition not sure what that's officially called we've also got the two magic knight ray earth box sets here the second one i got here for getting a new job quite recently so i'm glad that we've got them in very nice box sets. We've also got the seven volumes of Card Captor Sakura. I think there's only two more that she needs to finish off that set. And propping all of these up is the box set for Full Metal Alchemist, which she is admittedly trying to get me to read at the moment. And then we've got Dragon Ball, the complete box set, which is something that I don't even consider to be manga. It's transcended it now. But yeah, it's still going to be here. And as you can see there, hoisting that one up is the Dragon Ball Z box set. We've also got all seven volumes of Goodnight Pun Pun there at the top. And we've got one of the 40,000 volumes of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Next to that we've got Project X Challenges Cup Noodle which is something that I reviewed very early on in this channel and I think people who've only been here from the first early days actually remember those videos but we've then also got the first five volumes of Saint Young Men. We've then got the Chai Sweet Cat box set. Like I said that one definitely isn't for me so I can't even remember what it's really called. But we've also got my deluxe editions of Berserk. I am still trying to get volume six. It's something that I do need to pick up at the moment but we haven't really made a specific space for it just yet and just underneath that we've got the Helsing volumes I'm waiting to get volume three but if you're wondering what all of these books are resting on I will show you right here might not be able to see too well but it's the Norsica Valley of the Wind I think it's called and um, she really liked that because she's into her Studio Ghibli and stuff like that it's not really my kind of thing but I'm glad that she enjoys it as well I am not great at this kind of commentary improv thing I'm just doing my best because I prefer something that's got more of a script. Um, don't really know you could do a script for a room tour, so I'm just giving this my best go. I'm hoping that you guys enjoy it, but admittedly, you can just put me on mute. But moving over here now, you can see that we've got the Death Note box set, something that I'm very looking forward to reading when it comes to Halloween. We've also got Ghost in the Shell and the two deluxe editions of Blade of the Immortal. We've also got the six volumes, so pretty much halfway through, of Mobile Suit Gundam. That's just like a style that I really enjoy. I'm looking forward to completing that set. We've also got the three volumes of the Transformers manga and I have got no idea how she's confident that that is not going to fall but you know I'm just going to trust it. We've also got the Akira box set but Shadow Cat is not like me. She can read more than one book at a time so that's why you can see volume one sticking out there. It is part of the bigger box set. And then we've got the Sayuki, the reincarnated editions I think they're called. Like I said these are for her. She only recently picked these up over the weekend as well so I haven't got used to them being in the collection just yet. And some of these books are also recent acquisitions so it makes it very difficult when I'm doing my haul at the end of the month. But we've also got the Weight of the House Husband. Volume three started to collect that because I really enjoyed the anime that was on Netflix. We've got the Super Sentai Go Ranger collection there. I'm so happy that I got that in the collection. And then we've got the nine volumes of Maximum Ride. And yes, that seventh volume pisses me off every time I have to look at it. Why couldn't they just, why couldn't they put that at the same level as the other ones? Controversial placing now, but we've got the Scott Pilgrim six volumes here. These are the black and white editions, but they were manga side, so I didn't want to have to adjust an entire shelf just for those books, so I've put them there. Moving back to the other side now, we've got the Penguin Gentleman hardcover, along with the three volumes of Chobits, and three out of the five volumes of Rosa Vassal. We're caught up on Witch Hat Atelier, and we've also got Maison Ikuku. I'm not too sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's not my intention to say it wrong if I am 
Jeff said it wrong. We've also got Su and Tai Chan, which is another cat manga. So, of course, you had to pick that one up. It's from the same creator of Chai's Sweet Cat. We've got Skullface Bookseller, which she was talking to me about, and it sounds really enjoyable. Um, I think she's going to crack that open and read it soon. We've also got a man in his cat, which I brought for her, and she says it's really deeply emotional, but in a nice way for a change. We've also got Beyond the Clouds Volume 1, The Garden of Words, and Voices of a Distant Star. Moving into the DC section of the collection now. Hey, that rhymes. Because this is the stuff that I brought myself, as you can see here, the first of these galaxies is my DC books, also my Vertigo. I kind of mix them together. I'm not sure if I'd ever separate them. It kind of gets a bit confusing. But admittedly, I don't keep my collection in the most pristine of conditions. If you want something like that, I'd recommend checking out my friend's BJ Cakes or maybe even Joachim's Comic Center because his is very aesthetically pleasing. Whereas for me, I'm just more focused on where I can fit the books. But starting it off, we've got the American Vampire Omnibus Volume 1. Really hoping that they follow it up with a sequel volume soon. Animal Man by Grant Morrison, which I managed to find for an absolute steal. We've got Animal Man by Jeff Lemire. We've also got Aquaman by Jeff Johns, which I did a review for quite a bit of time ago, but I really enjoyed it. But there's going to be a playlist on either the left or right that's going to pop up, so make sure you check that out. The Authority, which I originally read in trade paperbacks and I think is very underrated and a lot of people would probably enjoy if they gave it a chance. We've got the Batgirl by Gail Simone, New 52 Omnibus, and of course, yes, the New 52, as you all know, is my jam. We've also got the Batgirl Year One Deluxe Edition there. Now, as you'll see as these collections go on, I use these Deluxe Editions in a way to fit and fill in space in the galaxies without having to take up an entire another cube. But moving into the Batman section now, as you can see here, we've got the Batman 66 Omnibus. Really like that. Really like the style that it goes for. I love that Mike Allred art. Going into the Deluxe Editions, we've got the Batman by Brian Azzarello, and we've also got the Batman Gotham by Gaslight, along with Batman Year 100. I tried at one point to categorise my Batman in chronological order, but admittedly, as great as Galaxy's look, it does make it difficult to organise your collection because there's only so much space, so sometimes I have to use deluxe editions to just fill in gaps to make sure that no space is going to waste, because I just didn't like it having so many gaps and then it might mean that some books couldn't make it onto the shelf at all. You know, when space gets limited, you kind of have to do what you have to do. We have to play the long game with collecting. It isn't something that just overnight you can get everything that you want presented in the way that you want it, so at the minute, I can't afford more shelves because of the fact that I just don't have the space. It's not a money issue, it's a space issue. And I want to move out of this place eventually and get my forever home wherever that may be. So I'd get more galaxies then or maybe even go back to Billy's. You know, collections evolve. Collections are more about your journey with comics. So at the mini, it is the way that it is. And that's why there's some deluxe editions here, there and everywhere. I know some people might say, oh, why don't you just buy the books that you can read in the meantime? But for me, sometimes books go out of print. That's just a fact of the hobby now. But going back to the books, we've got the Batman Black and White and we've also got the ugly ass spine designs of the three Batman Nightfall volumes. We've got the Batman by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, which was one of the first reviews that I ever did on this channel. Really enjoyed that one. We've also got the Batman City of Crime Deluxe Edition, along with the Batman Road to No Man's Land, which I am so excited that they're going to be doing the main event that's one of my favorite events of all time we've then got the batman by paul dini omnibus and a few more deluxe editions here so we've got batman the man who laughs although admittedly i'm hoping they come out with some kind of batman by ed brubaker omnibus i think that'd be really cool we've got batman face to face along with batman gothic and also the batman mad love deluxe edition which I wasn't really too sure if that should go along with the harley quinn part of the collection. I know some people are going to be annoyed as well because the large majority of my books are still in the cellophane, but if you've tried to get books out of a calyx, especially if it's packed in quite tightly, you can very easily rip a dust jacket. That is minimised when it's still in the cellophane, so for me, this is the way that I collect things, and I always say to people that if you aren't spending the money, you shouldn't really be too worried about what somebody's doing with it. Yeah, I admit, I got a little bit too defensive there. That's going to be the rant for this cube, we're just going to move on now because we've got the Batman by Grant Morrison 3 volume. So all three volumes are there and we've also got the Batman New 52 by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo Which I'm so glad that I finally got because that volume 2 coming out and it means that I can finally update my trade paperbacks Next to that we've got Batman Eternal and also got Batman and Robin by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason, Which I recently did a review of also just going back to Batman Eternal I got that in a great Amazon Germany sale I think I got it for about 20% of what cover price should have been Batman White Knight Which I read in single issues. I really love Sean Murphy and the art is gorgeous in that 
probably buy an absolute edition of it. And we've also got Batman Damned by Brian Azzarello. I found out as well in the comments of one of my recent videos that these are actually called prestige formats. So it does jut out a little bit and I found some ways to correct that in later cubes. I'm not sure why I haven't done it for this one, but we're going to move down a shelf. As you can see here, we've got Paper Girls Volume 2 and 3. I'm scripting up my review, which should be coming out soon. So that's why they're there, just so I can use them when I'm trying to look for a reference. But they're not going to be in the later part of the collection when we get to the image books. They're just there for the meantime. So the first book that we've got here is Batman Rise and Fall of the Batman. I recently did a poll where I was like, do you want me to read Batman by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason, or do you want me to read the James Tierney in the fourth run? And the new 52 run was the one that won. So that ended up getting read, but I probably will eventually read that. Actually, it'll probably be sooner rather than later because I really want to crack that book open. I love the first couple of issues that are read in singles. The, we then got the Trinity Deluxe Edition, which I put there on a technicality because it starts by saying Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman Trinity. So in my head, I could justify it even though later on, that entire plan falls to shit. We've then got Before Watchmen, the Books of Omnibus Volume 1, which I'm really excited to get into Volume 2. We've got the Crisis on Infinite Earths Deluxe Edition, the 35th anniversary, along with the Dead Man Omnibus by Neil Adams, and also the Deathstroke New 52 Omnibus, which has now gone really out of print, even though I was saying for a while that I get the feeling that that might happen in a couple of episodes of Whale Watch. But you know, these things happen. If anybody's still looking for that, hopefully you will manage to pick it up. Going into the next cube, we've got the Dial H Deluxe Edition, along with Doom Patrol by Grant Morrison. We've got the five volumes of Ex Machina, which I opted for instead of the Omnibus because I started picking these up as and when they came out. And I think that it was easier to read that than just one absolutely massive 1,500 page Omnibus. Speaking of which, we've then got the Final Crisis 10th Anniversary Omnibus, which I got as part of that Amazon Germany sale. The lighting isn't too great here, but you might be able to see that I've slotted Flex Mentalo between that and the next book because of the fact that it just really helped to fill out this gap. And I got this from my YouTube husband, Comic Bound. He surprised me with this, but as you can see here, it's signed by Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly. I'm really happy that I've got that in my collection because I didn't think I was going to at one point. I've then got the Flash by Jeff Johns Omnibus Volume 1 and Volume 2, and I'm not too sure if you can see here, but I actually like that these are separated by a bit of a wall because of the fact that if you look at the designs of the spines, it just kind of looks really funny. So it almost looks as if the Flash in the Volume 1 is giving the Flash from the Volume 2 the silent treatment. So that was unintentional, but I'm still really happy that that happened. Still haven't got the Flashpoint Omnibus, but as you know, I've already done a video on that. But we've got the New 52 by Flash Manipole Omnibus. We've also got the Grayson Super Spy Omnibus. And then we've got the Green Arrow, the Longbow Hunters Volume 1. Excited to see how skinny or fat the second volume might be. And then we've got one of my favourite volumes from the New 52, the Green Arrow by Jeff Lemire. So such a great deluxe edition. I'm glad that they brought that out. I absolutely love this when I read it in single issues and I keep meaning to go back to it and give it a reread now that it's all out in one go. Also, it is very difficult to get books out your shelf when you are trying to film at the same time, but we've then got the Green Arrow Year One, unfortunately lights kind of obscured that. Then of course we have got the Green Lantern by Jeff Johns, all three of the omnibuses and also all of the rings there. A bit disappointed I never got my hands on that flash ring, but this is one of my favorite runs of all time. If it was that I had some kind of custom dust jackets for this series, I'd probably always make sure that these are always in the same cube. But the minute, just due to how whammy they are, I just couldn't manage to make that work. I'm just happy that I managed to get the three matching spines so that the text on volume two isn't lower than volumes one and three, which I've seen on some people's. Okay, so I only just got to this point of the room tour before I realized that the microphone wasn't plugged in. But like I said, next to that, we've got Harleen, which is a book that I recently picked up. And it's the reason why this shelf comes a little bit more forward than this one, because of the fact that I wanted these to all line up, even though I haven't done that for one of the Batman rows. And then next to that, we've got the Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, which I recently picked up, but I haven't yet had a chance to read, unfortunately. And we've got the three volumes of Harley Quinn, which was done by Amanda Connor and Gianni Palmiotti. Next shelf down, and hoping that the lighting isn't fucking this over too much, but we've got the Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens, next to He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. We've then got the Identity Crisis 15th Anniversary, and quite conveniently next to it, we've got the Infinite Crisis Omnibus. Then then two books that I had to make sure were next to each other. I'm just going to move the light here so that you can properly get the full effect. But we've got both volumes of Injustice. Of course, those two had to be together because it's the first time that DC's absolutely nailed the spines on two collected editions. Then onto the next cube, we've got the Invisibles by Grant Morrison, we've got the I Zombie Omnibus, and we've got the JLA by Grant Morrison Omnibus as well. Now, this is where I think it's gonna get a bit controversial because to make sure that all my books could be on the shelf as much as possible, I had to start doing this. So as you can see, behind the JLA by Grant Morrison Omnibus, 
we've got the DC 1 million omnibus. But still, I picked that book up before I realized that the majority of it's going to be contained in the JLA omnibus. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to sell that yet. But just to make a bit of space, it is just behind some of the other books. And you'll see that that happens a little bit more often as we go into the rest of the shelves. After that, we've got the JLA Tower Bobble Deluxe Edition. Really excited to crack that book open, read it again. We've also got the two volumes of Justice League International. No way out on if we're getting a volume three though. I know continuity wise, some of this might not be correct. Like I said, I was just putting volumes where I could to make sure that I maximize the space. But we've got the Justice League of America by Brad Meltzer. We've got the Justice League, The Nail, which is an Elseworlds tale that I really enjoy. We've also got JLA Year One, which was written by none other than the man himself, Mark fucking Wade. We've got the three volumes of Jeff Johns' Justice Society of America. Bit of a shame that the logo doesn't match on all three of the spines. Then after that, we've got Legion of Superheroes five years later. No word on if there's going to be a volume two yet, so I'm really hesitant to crack that one open. So I've got the first two volumes of Lucifer. They aren't affected by this. But to make space, some sacrifices had to be made, unfortunately. So the other four volumes of New Teen Titans, because of the fact that we don't know what's happening with volume six, are stored behind this row. So the series is still represented, but I didn't want a pile of New Teen Titans omnibuses on my floor, or maybe putting some of the books at the very bottom here on the floor. So that's a sacrifice that I did unfortunately have to make, but don't worry, I have still made sure that this Calyx is weighted correctly so that hopefully it won't tip over. We've also got the Nightwing New 52 omnibus. It's called the Prince of Gotham. We've got the Orion by Walter Simonson. We've got the Planetary Omnibus, and we've also got the Promethea three deluxe editions by Alan more and again I'm not sure if you can see just there but the other two volumes are just behind when I move into a bigger place I'm gonna make sure that I can get as many shelves as I need so that I can have the collection in full display but for now we do have to sacrifice to win that's kind of always been my motto we've then got the Red Hood and the Outlaws volume one not too sure if I'm gonna keep that in my collection it's more of an impulse buy but it is a new 52 so I am kind of biased to it and I'm still gonna eke out hope that maybe they will continue that series but it doesn't look likely we've also got the Robin year one deluxe edition there and then we've got the two volumes of the sandman omnibus and this is going to be blasphemy to a lot of people but volume three is just behind volume two right here that's just because that seems to be more of a companion omnibus so i don't really feel the need to have it on display i'd rather make a little bit of space for some other books at the meantime we've then got the nightwing year one deluxe edition there which only fit there which is why it's kind of in an odd place and it doesn't really fit in with anything else i was like should i put this next to robin and if it goes after robin year one can I get by on a technicality but you know it's one of them things hopefully in later months i'll have a bit more space maybe some more shelving and i can display this in the way that i want to we've also got the seven soldiers omnibus by grant morrison along with superman vs muhammad ali deluxe edition we've got the superman the exile omnibus and other stories which was a bit of an impulse buy but i've heard great things about it and then we've got the very whammy boy himself the death and return of superman this was the printing that i wanted i absolutely love this cover i immediately cracked this open and made sure that i got the full fold out page with it one of the earliest comics i ever read superman batman omnibus volume one very excited to read volume two a recent buy that i'm very happy to see enter the dog pound we've got the superman by peter j tomasi and patrick gleason omnibus so we've got superman for all seasons by jeff loeb and tim sale we've got superman secret identity deluxe edition along with superman secret origins and of course by mark miller himself we've got the superman red sun oversized hardcover we've then got the original printing of the super sons omnibus yeah i'm still a little bit disappointed that they came out with that expanded edition we've then got the swamp thing by nancy a Collins omnibus along with the Swamp Thing New 52 and I've also got my original printing of the um, Swamp Thing by Scott Snyder Deluxe Edition just behind that because that was something of a grail for me and Shadowcat managed to find it and I'm not one of these I don't really like selling off stuff that people have brought me as gifts so I kept both of them and I'm really happy with that because it's got a sentimental value to me. I have got the three volumes of Sweet Tooth in Deluxe Edition volumes two and three just behind it. I know that's going to be blasphemous to people because now it's everybody's favorite series since there's a TV show that's come out. But for me, for the time being, Volume 2 and 3, pretty comfy having them behind there, but like I said, when I get more shelves, everything's going to be on full display. We've then got the Very Whammy Teen Titans by Jeff Johns Omnibus, along with Trillium by Jeff Lemire, which I got at a great discount thanks to Wills Apart in Birmingham having a mega sale. I've also got the Wonder Woman by George Perez Omnibus Volume 1. You're probably wondering, where Volumes 2 and 3? I can't see them behind them. Well, you can't really see anything behind, but they're behind these ones just because I recently moved the shelves and I was very lazy and I 
I was like, well, if I can't see it anyway, I can't be bothered to move it too much. We've then got the Wonder Woman by Phil Jimenez Omnibus, which featured quite recently on Whale Watch, along with the Wonder Woman by Gail Simone Omnibus. I've only read part of this because I've read it in like its story arcs, but I haven't read the full thing. But now I'm scared to crack it open because of the fact that it's so rare. I just don't want to damage it because if I did, then there's no way that I can replace it. But yeah, of course, we've got the Wonder Woman New 52 by Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chang. And the last DC Omnibus that we've got here, we've got Zero Hour 25th Anniversary. I've also just got some miscellaneous books here. This is me being a little bit hypocritical, but I've got my three volumes of Powers of Definitive Hardcover Collection, which I recently brought back after having them over at my mum and dad's for so long. But the minute, this is technically owned by DC, so in my head, I can get away with putting it here, even though it was icon printed, and I really like this format rather than the trade paperbacks that they recently released. Not really sure what's gonna happen if I do manage to get the later volumes, because they are very rare, so I haven't really factored in for that. And of course, we've got the Brian Michael Bendis Crime Noir Omnibus, which yes, was printed by Marvel but I feel like this is so in tone with powers that I just wanted to keep it there. I'm not gonna lie, I think that they look very nice together. Moving on, and I know that this might be something that is a big no-no for other people, but like I said, don't really have too much space or storage at the minute. But these are some Dark Horse Library editions. I've got the Alien, Predator, Aliens, Aliens, Fears, Predator. Very happy that I managed to get the complete set of them. We've also got the complete set of the Hellboy Library editions. That was one of my absolute favorite series growing up, so I'm really glad that I've got these beautiful volumes. And it hurts me and it pains me a little bit inside every time I look at them that they are unfortunately on the floor but you know we're playing the long game buddy don't worry eventually i will get you to the highest of the highs and recently brought i've got the lady killer library edition by joelle jones i might do a review of that soon because i'm very hyped for that because i've heard that it's a great concept but right here i've got the dreadstar omnibus admittedly that was a blind buy i don't know i might give that a read online and see if i actually like it because i've never known too much about it but i've heard a lot of people say that it's really great storytelling we've then got the firefly legacy deluxe edition i really enjoyed the Firefly TV show and I've never read any of the comics so I'm looking forward to that one. I'm just waiting for the other two volumes. I know one of them's out now. I should probably pick that up. And then I've got this Aliens art book which is just drawings by the character David um, which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of phallic symbolism in it though. And that is Shadowcat's Legend of Zelda. She's got the trade paperbacks that I got her the um, treasure chest set for. And these are the German editions of Afro Samurai which is a book that I really want to get my hands on. I really loved the anime when I was growing up i really wanted to read the manga but it is deadly out of print and it's kind of a shame because of how popular that title was these are just some books that i'm planning on selling so i'm not really gonna linger on them too much it's stuff that i've upgraded moving across to my trade paperbacks now because i just needed a break to get a drink of water for my mouth so at the top here we've got the scott pilgrim color editions i really enjoyed revisiting that we've got the irredeemable and incorruptible omnibus we've got the six volumes of the boys omnibus but these are the comic editions are really really don't like movie edition covers it really angers me i think i've only got one or two in here and they were both gifts so i can allow that but then we've got all 12 volumes of chew yeah i never really upgraded to the oversized hardcovers but that was like one of the last series that i read before i started this channel so it just missed out on getting a review we've then got regression volume one by colin bunn along with the spawn compendium volume one very excited that they've solicited a volume two just hope that they follow through with it. I've then got pretty much all of The Walking Dead in trade paperback, save for about three volumes now. This was one of the first series that made me realize that I wanted to get into collecting comics. So that's why I've still kept these. And also, I'm not sure if I showed you this the first time around, but some of mine are signed, so I can't really ever sign them. I'm just gonna bring it here next to the window, but yeah. So some of these are signed, so I'm never gonna sell them. And then we've got the five volumes of DMZ. And for anybody who didn't know what I was talking about in my haul when I got that last volume, that is what I'm talking about. What in the fuck happened with that last logo? Sort it out, DC. We've then got the two volumes of the Fables Compendiums. If you didn't know what I meant in pull list, this is what I'm saying, that they've somehow so far managed to keep the theme going that they've got the connected spines. I'm just hoping that volumes three and four do the same thing and they don't do a DC. I've then got the three volumes of Northlanders by Brian Wood. Really enjoy that series. I think it's criminally underrated. We've then got one of my favourite series of all time with Preacher. These are my trade paperbacks that I had from the days when I bought these all with my paper round money. We've then got Transmetropolitan, all 10 volumes. I didn't upgrade to the absolutes for that and I probably should have done. I really enjoyed that series. I'm not sure 
why I didn't buy that. But moving on to my DC main universe books, we've got the 52 four volumes. Yeah, I didn't get the omnibus and I do kind of regret it, but I also heard that the spine on it is awful. So I'm happy with these. These were also some of the first books that I ever brought. I've got Batman of Death and the Family. That's pretty much the equivalent of what's in the deluxe edition because it's also got a lonely place of dying. I've then got the two volumes of Hawkman by Jeff Johns because I didn't get a chance to pick up the omnibus and also because that, that spine was like a death trap. But Luke, why couldn't they get the logo goes correct for just two volumes. Power Girl by Jeff Johns. It's also got some work from Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor. This trade paperback's quite rare. I think this is one of the only trade paperbacks that I've ever paid cover price for. But it's just because it was so difficult to get and admittedly seems like the series has been forgotten about. But I really like Power Girl. I wish that would get an absolute edition because um, there's some definitely good assets in there that need to be in a bigger size. I've got Superman Unchained. I bought that on accident. I'd much prefer it to be in a bigger size because, you know, it's Jim Lee. It's just one of them series that I think is so weird that you've got Scott Snyder, who's a big name. You've got Jim Lee, who's a massive name. And, you know, I also did a video on him, which I'd appreciate if you could check out. That video took me six days to do. But why is this series not big at all? Nobody even talks about it. Like, Superman 4 Tomorrow gets talked about more than Superman Unchained. We're then moving into the Marvel trade paperback. Starting it off, we've got the Avengers initiative complete collection but then i've got quite a nice run of black panther here starting it off with the four volumes of the christopher priest run and then we've got the reginald hudlin run which i think is much better for new readers but i do quite enjoy that one already at the same time when i started reading daredevil so big fan of that series we've also got the black panther man without fear which takes place after shadowlands so i don't know does that technically class as a daredevil book i'm not too sure so just keep it up here we've then got the black widow by devin grayson and greg rucker complete collection along with the Mark fucking Wade Complete Collection. Blade Complete Collection by Mark Guggenheimer. You'll notice that the majority of my trade paperbacks for Marvel are Complete Collections, and I would just think they're much more convenient. I've also got the Dark Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis. We've got the two volumes of Deadpool by Joe Kelly. Hopefully, they finish that run soon. And I've also got the four volumes. Going to have to jump a row down here. But the four volumes of Deadpool by Daniel Way. I'll go back up to that middle shelf in a minute, so don't worry. But then I've got the Gambit King of Thieves Complete Collection, which I got for about about five euros in the Amazon Germany sale. I've then got the two volumes of the Immortal Iron Fist. The first part of that is contained in that omnibus, so there's more here than there is in that book, but you never know, maybe they'll come out with an extended version someday. I've got the two volumes of the Incredible Hercules, and then the bane of my existence. I've got the Iron Man by Matt Fraction Complete Collection Volume 1, and only volume one because they've never completed this complete collection. This is my favorite Iron Man run and it just gets disrespected the entire time. Unless I get all of the original trade paperbacks, I'm not gonna get a complete version of that story. So fucking stupid. Loki Agent of Asgard complete collection, which I reviewed last year. Mighty Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis and Mighty Avengers by Dan Slott. New Mutants by Abnet and Lanning volume one. Definitely need to pick up the other volumes of that. Scholar Witch by James Robinson. Brought that on a blind buy because I like Starman so much and I've also got the Secret Avengers by Rick Remender. I've got two volumes of Spider-Girl and I only need the third volume and this recently came into the collection but it's Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man by Peter David. I've got volume one of Spider-Man the Gauntlet and I need to pick up volume two. I really like this run when I was reading it in single issues. That was a time when I was really starting to get into comics. And I've got the Mighty Thor by Chris Somney Complete Collection. And then we've got the first comic series that I ever brought and I know I've been saying this about a few books so far but this actually is the first one that I ever brought. Ultimate Spider-Man, like, look how old this book is to me now, like, it's just so yellowed, and I think if I read this anymore, it'd just completely fall apart, but this is the reason why you're watching this video now. If it wasn't for this series, probably wouldn't have got into comics, but I've got all of Ultimate Spider-Man all the way up into, spoilers, Death of Spider-Man. Wolverine by Daniel Way Complete Collection. I keep meaning to finish off that run. I only read the first couple of issues. Then we go into some hardcovers. So I've got Aphrodisiac and Muhammad Ali. I've also got the two volumes of Baltimore, but I haven't dared to track down any more of the Magnoliverse books. I've also got two volumes of Booster Gold and the four volumes of Gotham Central. Now, yeah, I do wish I would have picked up that omnibus. It just disappeared and went rare before our eyes. Justice League Power Rangers by Tom Taylor, pretty fun book, but nothing that you need to urgently read. And then we've got the six volumes of the Starman Omnibus. I've then got volume one of Superman Man of Steel by Jonathan Byrne. I've then got a signed copy of Pulp by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. It's Thanks to Forbidden Planet that this has got that signed book plate right there. I've then also got the first volume of Reckless, need to pick up the second one, and I've got Wanted. I really love this book, even though it's stupid, and even though the movie that's 
adapted on it, but isn't really at all. It's stupid as well. It's my kind of stupid. I really love this title. I've then just randomly placed all of the Walking Dead hardcovers. Now, if you were watching the channel last year, you will know that this was something that I was hunting for for quite a while. I wanted to try and get all of them under about 50% in total, and I did manage to do that. So I'm glad that I upgraded to the oversized hardcovers. This is one of my favorite series of all time. So definitely glad that that's got its own shelf pretty much, but it is going to share it with Why the Last Man, which is another of my favorite series of all time. I kind of want to do a review of that before the TV show comes out. Yeah, kind of because of views, but also because I want to have this series fresh in my mind before I watch the TV show. I've got my Harry Potter books, nothing comic related. These are pretty much the only books that I've got in my house because of the fact that, you know, I pretty much read books digitally now. And I've also got the complete stories of Conan, who's one of my favorite literary characters. I've then got the lock and key six trade paperback box set. So I just keep that down there for now. And we've got volumes one to nine of the TMNT series. But admittedly, when The Last Ronin is finally completed, I hope they come out with some kind of absolute edition of that because I'd really enjoy that. But the rest of the series, I'm happy to have in this format. We've then got the two volumes of Yusagi Ujimbo that I've managed to find, and that is volumes one and volume six. I only managed to get volume one because of the channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. Definitely recommend checking them out. And if you do want to support the channel as well, I'd recommend using code WOOFWOOF for $2 off your order at the checkout. And then next to that, just at the end, we've got three volumes of Black Sad, and four volumes of Castles in the Star because this is pretty much like the only European comics that I've really got. This right here for anybody wondering is my sketchbook. So straight off the bat we've got a great picture of Batman there. We've got a Superman by Phil Winslade and of course the one that I went to the convention for in the first place we have got a Tyrese with the hammer. I stood in queue for ages for that and I'm really glad that I managed to get that one. I'm always going to treasure that. But as well you might have seen it here at the beginning but I also have a zombie Spider-Man by Sean Phillips. This was the time when the Marvel Zombies line was just popping off, so I didn't get, I'll tell you the story for that when I, when I get to Criminal actually. But going back to that middle shelf, here are all of the Transformers IDW books, but this was pretty much the only shelf that could have the space to get all of them in, so I think it looks pretty good there. And then after that, we've got the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle books by IDW. Really love that run. It's so cool going back and revisiting the origins of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, especially when you see where it's got to now. And then of course, we've got Richard Stark's Parker, the Martini edition by Darwin Cook. It's a very tall book. So this is pretty much the only place that I could really comfortably put it. Now we are gonna move it over to the main part of the room, which you've probably seen through the majority of my videos. We're gonna start at the top right here, but we've got pretty much my Terry Moore books that I've managed to pick up so far. So I've got the Strangers in Paradise hardcover collection there. And I've got the volume 25, if I can read Roman numerals correctly, along with the five years omnibus, which came with this really nice boot plate. We then move into my Rick Remender super oversized hardcovers because we've got the three volumes of Black Science. We've got Crawl Space. We've got Deadly Class. I'm hoping they come out with volume three soon because I haven't read volume two. I read volume one and I really enjoyed it. I've also got End League, which was a bit of a blind buy. Fear Agent, which I've really enjoyed and hopefully I can reread soon. Gigantic, again, a bit of a blind buy just because I wanted to complete this set. Low, which I'm really excited that they're going to finish off this year with a volume two and then I can finally crack that open. And Tokyo Ghost, which I reviewed last September. And so I'd recommend checking that out. We've also got the biggest the damaged Sin City, which I think, if I remember correctly, is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. So I didn't know whether to review that and do something special. I know that they're coming out with that slip case version of all seven books, which yeah, I'm really tempted to pick up, I can't lie. I've then got the three super editions of Umbrella Academy right there, which are really beautiful. You get an art print with each one, but because of the fact that the Power Rangers are in front of me and these will literally fall over at anything, I'm not really going to get them out just now, so sorry to disappoint. I've then got the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Volume 1 and Volume 2 Absolute Editions, which I thought I'd never own, if I'm honest with you, but somebody missold the Volume 1. They just didn't list it correctly, but somehow I managed to stumble on it. All-Star Superman, beautiful book. We've then got the Batman Arkham Asylum, which I really don't like that spine, but with absolutes, you kind of have to commit to one or the other. It's either spines in or spines out. I went spines out, so unfortunately that's the spine now for Batman Arkham Asylum. Batman Black Mirror, which seems to have disappeared into being out of print, just out of nowhere. Batman Hush, which if you look here, isn't actually in the slipcase because of the fact that I'm reviewing it at the moment. Batman Killing Joke, classic story. Batman Year One, kind of overpriced for the fact that you just get the same book twice. A book that I know nobody likes is All-Star Batman and Robin. I've got a video planned for that where I'm gonna say like, 
what the hell happened to this book? But I'm like, if I'm going to review this, I want it in the best format possible. And obviously, people buy absolutes mostly for the art. So it's Jim Lee. Of course, I'm going to buy it in an absolute. And obviously, then we jump from Dark Knight 1 to Dark Knight 3 because of the fact that Dark Knight Strikes Again is included in that book there. But you know, I like their covers in Dark Knight 3. So I buckled and I bought the absolute. Sometimes you have to do it for the content. Absolute Day Tripper, which I haven't read since it originally came out and I really want to revisit. Absolute DC The New Frontier, one of my favourite books of all time, really must get back and give that a reread. But sometimes I don't have time to read, let alone reread. I've got Absolute Green Lantern Green Arrow, which was a great book when I was growing up. I'm not sure if it still hold up today. Absolute Green Arrow by Kevin Smith, bit of a blind buy because of the fact that somebody was selling it for like 20 quid on eBay. Absolute Kingdom Come, which I think was the second Absolute edition that I ever brought. It's a little bit beaten up, but I really love that book. Absolute Luther Joker, which I have to give points to just for presentation alone. I like that it's two hardcovers in the slipcase, one for Luther, one for Joker. I reviewed Joker last year and I'm not sure if I should go and review Luther so that I've got both of them, you know, in the playlist for you guys. Let me know what you think about that. Then three of my favourite books in my collection, The Absolute Preacher. The video doesn't do it justice just how beautiful these books are like. It's like having a Bible, it's like having some classic collection within your library and I'm just really glad that I've got those. Absolute Scarlet by Brian Michael Bendis which I had to pick up for that video that I'm planning on doing later. Absolute Superman for tomorrow because I'm weak and I really like Jim Lee's art. And then I've got The Absolute Swamp Thing by Alan Moore, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Really glad that they are doing a Volume 3 later this year and hopefully it's more available than Volume 2 was last year. Absolute V for Vendetta which I brought with my paper money and is one of the best smelling books in this collection like when they make videos that you can have a scent come through with as well that's the first video that i'm going to film absolute watchmen classic everybody has to have it in the collection in some way then we've got absolute justice league the world's greatest heroes because i just love alex ross art but it is bigger than other absolutes so it does jut out at the end there but alphabetically it's still in the right place so pretty happy with that we've then got the four volumes of power rangers one of my favorite series of all time if you couldn't tell from all the figures that are scattered about and i'm just glad that they're going to continue that when necessary evil and then at the end right there we've got bone the one volume epic i really want to read that i haven't really read too much of it but i buckled and got the complete set in a three for two and now i just want to read it but it's just finding the time going to the top here we've got my NECA ultimate terminator figures like terminator is my favorite movie of all time at the mini i'm keeping these in the box because i really want them to do a NECA ultimate sarah connor and kyle reese from terminator one and then i can do like the tech noir scene and i just want to be able to do that i want to be able to make a diorama i've then also got the police assault terminator one i want to get him his kind of 80s style bike so that i can make a little display for him i've got the t1000 in just sort of his normal mode and then i've also got the motorcycle cop version but i'm just really glad that they did this because it's a necker ultimate sarah connor and john connor like i just think that's phenomenal and i want to get him a little bit of a dirt bike so that i can recreate some scenes these are the only toys that i'm really thinking about recreating scenes for. I absolutely love this line but at the mini because I can't create anything I've just kept them in the box. I think they display beautifully. Moving this down to the start of the image books I've got the three volumes of Criminal right here which was one of my favorite series when I was growing up. I do have the original volumes right behind it and this the volume one for Criminal, the one that was printed by Icon, is one of my favorite books in my collection. I'm just gonna get it out for you here, but you might be wondering why didn't I sell this, you know, when it was known that that reprint was coming out. But as you can see there, look, vintage 2010 this is 11 years old i'm never gonna sell this book it's so great but because of the fact that the spines don't line up and i don't have that much space at the moment it is just behind here just so that i could make a little bit of space but that's also where i got that print of that zombie spider-man from he included that as a little extra and i'll always remember that story it was so great of him but yeah good of image for bringing these out so that we can have all of the matching spines again but i've decided to make this a little bit of an ed brubaker and sean phillips shall right here so we've got the three volumes of criminal going into cruel summer if you're confused on how to collect that series i've done a video that you can watch i've then got the fade out which i managed to find as part of forbidden planet wolverhampton's mega sale so we're going for 
15 quid at the point when it was already rare. Recently got that one, even though it made it into my top 10 image whales, but the Fatal Volume 1 and Volume 2. And we've also got Incognito, which seems to be the forgotten book that those two did together. Kill or Be Killed, which was the first review where I actually properly tried with my editing. So hopefully some of you guys watch that and enjoy it. And also what I recently got from a viewer of the channel, Baraf, is Scene of the Crime Deluxe Edition. So I'm really happy with that one, but you'll notice that a lot of the books, some jut out and some don't. Again, we're playing that long game we are sacrificing to him. But in that little corner there, as you can see, we've got Descend It, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Moving on to the next cube, we've got some seller tape. Wow, this is rare seller tape. I'm not sure who printed it. You know, it has got a little bit of wear and tear. Okay, this joke's run its course, so I'm not going to continue on with it. But we've got the three volumes of East of West, which was the last review that I did. Kind of had mixed feelings on it. Not sure if I feel like it's overrated or not, so I'd recommend checking that out. Then moving on, we've got the Godland Celestial Editions and also the I Hate Fairyland Deluxe Editions. Then, in what is a move that is even blasphemous to myself, I've had to push the majority of the Invincible books behind the first six volumes, unfortunately. I love this series. It's one of my favourite series of all time. I can't wait until the day when I can finally display this series, you know, in its entirety again. Shadowcat is reading volume one, so you can see that the dust jacket's there. Still not letting anybody read a book with a dust jacket on. But yeah, the mini, I am just displaying the first six volumes, but I have got all 12. We've then got Monstrous Volume 1. Not sure when they're going to come out with a volume two of that. I've then got the three volumes of Nailbiter. If it sounds like I'm out of breath, it's because it's so warm at the minute and I can't get the window open because of just how loud it is outside. But yeah, I did a review in Nailbite. I'd recommend checking it out. Volume 1 of Outcast. Need to catch up on those other volumes. I've got Volume 1 of Paper Girls there. Hopefully you'll remember that I said that Volumes 2 and 3 are on the other side because I'm using them for a review. Postal Complete Collection, which I did a review of. Um, I don't really see too many people talking about that book though, so I'm not really sure what other people think about it. Rat Queen's Deluxe Edition Volume 1. Recently brought that because it's like 55% off or something like that. Revival Deluxe Editions. I've got all four. As you can see here, Volumes three and four are just behind i've then got the three volumes of saga yeah i have afforded them the liberty of being on full display sitting next to that is skyward which i recently brought and i can't wait to finish off reading that velvet by ed brubaker which arguably could have been in the first cube but you know it's here deal with it and we stand on god deluxe edition by brian k vaughan then i've got all four volumes of the wicked and the divine i can't wait to crack it open and finish off reading this i've had to tuck volume four behind there because these are the last of my image books for now so i kind of wanted to contain it all to one block now the reason why this is in w rather than a is because i forgot that it started with an a after i'd moved all the ed brubaker books so it's there for now and i think it kind of fits in because it's wolfman moving into the marvel books now and i know that some people are going to be annoyed about some books getting pushed the back but again this is my collection and in no way will it affect yours if you don't agree with what i've done and at the end of the day this is a hobby let's let's just try and keep it fun guys but starting it off there sorry the shadow's a little bit off but we've got the absolute carnage omnibus sitting next to the annihilation and annihilation conquest avengers west coast volume one unfortunately i don't have volume two i'm really struggling to find it so if anybody can hook me up that would be greatly appreciated and i've technically already got west coast avengers volume three because i've got that avengers by john Byrne omnibus we've got avengers the gathering and i've also got avengers by kurt Busiek and george perez volume two unfortunately has had to be tucked to the back i'm afraid i've then got the avengers rage of ultron and i am expecting to get the captain america by dan jurgens that's why there's a bit of space in this block right now hopefully it can fit in that gap i've got the avengers by jonathan hickman volume one and volume two loved one of that in single issues avengers vs x-men which was the event from Marvel that I first read in single issues, so I've really got a soft spot for that one. Captain America, yeah, you know the joke's gonna happen again. It's Mark fucking Wade. I've then got my Captain America by Ed Brubaker omnibuses, and I could arguably push some of these to the back, but I don't know. I don't feel right doing that. That's the one that even I couldn't get myself to do, but I've got the first three volumes there. That's the beautiful reprinted DM variant that you can see there. But then we move down, and just behind the Zia Rangers, we've got the rest of the Captain America books, along with Captain Britain Omnibus. Now, Shadowcat managed to find that for me for our anniversary. There is no way that I'm ever going to sell it. But I'm also going to buy the Expanded Omnibus. But that is just like a holy grail. The fact they even exist in my collection is something that I never thought was going to happen. But don't worry, I'm going to go back and talk about some of the Power Rangers at the end of the video. If you're wondering about them, for now we're just going to focus on the books. But I've got the Civil War oversized hardcover, along with the Conan the Barbarian by Jason Aaron. Then we're moving into my Daredevil collection. Now starting it off, we've got the Silver Age Omnibus. I haven't got the Chip Zdarsky oversized hardcover, admittedly though, because that has to be getting an omnibus at some point. And I don't want it to be the same as what I did with Mark Wade, that I brought all the oversized hardcovers 
But then I wanted the Omnibus anyway. Like Daredevil is something that I pretty much exclusively got in that format now. So hopefully the Zdarsky Omnibus isn't too far behind. But then I've got the Frank Miller with the normal volume and the companion volume. The book that should say Daredevil and I'm tempted to get a custom dust jacket for because it's the Marvel Knights by Joe Casada Omnibus. Daredevil by Bendis, one of the first titles that I ever read. I had, this was what made me realise that I was in love with comics. So I originally had the six oversized hardcovers but I had to upgrade to those Omnibuses because Volume 2 of the oversized hardcovers was just stupid. The way that they printed it, the logo was smaller and I'd lived with that for about 10 years so I decided to treat myself and upgrade to the omnibuses. We've got the Daredevil End of Days oversized hardcover which is written by Brian Michael Bendy so I'm not too sure why that wasn't included when they reprinted the omnibuses. I'm going to explain why she's sitting down in a bit but then I've got the Ed Brubaker omnibuses. Unfortunately it does look like mine is suffering from some kind of decoloration. I've got the Shadowland omnibus and the Mark Wade omnibuses along with Electra just being right there. Can't wait for that Charles Soul volume to come out later this year. But then moving across we've got the only two Deadpool on the buses that I've got which is surprising for how many has been released for that character yeah we've got the Psycho Rangers in the front as well but I've got Deadpool and Cable although technically it should be Cable and Deadpool and I've got the Deadpool by Pacine and Jerry Dugan on the bus I've got the Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme Omnibus Volume 1 right there Volume 2 is just behind I kind of want to read that before I commit to buying that third volume later this year and then I've got some Doctor Strange oversized hardcovers so I've got the two Jason Aaron volumes at the minute I don't really feel like upgrading to the omnibus but you know as soon as I see it maybe I'll change my mind and I've also got the Donny Cates volume there as well. I've got the Earth X trilogy both Alpha and Omega admittedly in a few months if I need more space Omega is going to get pushed to the back. We've then got Britain represented with the Excalibur omnibus volume 1 Really glad that they're doing a volume 2 of that, can't wait to read that full series. And I've got the Fantastic Four volume 1, the Silver Age stuff by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Really looking forward to some of those reprints later on because that's a series that even though it came out in the 60s, I still want to go back and give it some love. So I'm waiting for all those volumes to come out and then maybe I might do like a retrospective review as a modern day reader. I've got the John Byrne Omnibus Volume 1. I've got Volume 2 behind it. It's just they are very whammy books and I'd rather have all my Fantastic Four self-contained as much as possible. So unfortunately that sacrifice did have to be made. Fantastic Four by Wade and Waringo. And then I've got the Mark Bagley Matt Fraction Omnibus. And then the two Jonathan Hickman Omnibus. He's very excited that people can and get the reprint of that later this year. I've also got some Terminator 2 trading cards here, which, you know, I've never really been a trading card guy, but I love Terminator 2. I'm actually going to be really lazy and just sit on my chair and rotate because I've been filming for about an hour and a half now and I'm really tired and sweaty. But yeah, I've then got The Guardians of the Galaxy by Brian Michael Bendis. I've got volumes 1, 2 and 5. I need to make sure that I pick up volumes 3 and 4 sooner rather than later. Hawkeye by Matt Fraction. Not sure if I just read that at the wrong time, but wasn't a massive fan of it but I feel like I have to give books two chances before I know that it's not for me because sometimes I'm just not in the right mood when I read something. Then we're moving into my Hulk books. I've got the first two volumes of Incredible Hulk by Peter David. Looking forward to volume three getting released. I think it's on its way to me now if I remember correctly. But then we've got Planet Hulk which is one of my favourite events. World War Hulk which is one of the most forgettable events. And then we've got the Hulk by Jeff Loeb and Ed McGuinness on the bus which I did a review of all that good Red Hulk stuff. I've then got the first two volumes of the Immortal Hulk. I still need to pick up volume three. I've got the reprint of the Infinity Gauntlet Omnibus and I'm glad that some of you guys can get that restock later this year. So I've got Iron Man by Michelini. I've got the Iron Man by Kurt Busiek. Iron Man, I think that was by Joe Casada, the man in the Iron Mask. No, sorry, it's called the mask in the Iron Man. My bad. Iron Man Extremis, which is one of the only books that's a movie cover, but I'm not going to show you because it takes so long to pose these Power Rangers, I'm not going to lie. And then, of course, we've got the Iron Man Tony Stark by Dan Slott. But as you can see, nothing by Matt Fraction. Rotating along here to go to the next shelf, we've got the Yellow, Blue and Grey by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. You know, the little short stories that they did about Daredevil, Spider-Man and the Hulk. Then we've got the Loki Journey into Mystery by Kieran Gillen on the bus. I don't even know if I've read that or not. Like, I think I might have done in single issues, but I'm not too sure. So I could probably do with going back and revisiting that. Marvels by Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross. I did a review of that a little bit of time ago. And admittedly, now I kind of want it in that monster format. Like, 
that's a sight to behold. I've then got Moon Knight by Brian Michael Bendis, a guilty pleasure of mine, and a book that I recently managed to get, which was a little bit of a whale of mine, was Moon Knight by Jeff Lemire, that's the oversized hardcover. I've then got two volumes of Ms. Marvel, I want to get the rest of those. But then I've got Namor by John Byrne, a book that I was very excited to get, but unfortunately, looks like mine leans a little bit, it looks like the spine isn't entirely right. I have got all seven volumes of the new Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis, but admittedly volumes five to seven are just behind there, but you know, it's still represented in the front and it does get pushed to the front of the cube so you know it kind of gets a little bit more respect because of the fact that the whole series isn't on display. I've then got the new Mutants Volume 1, yeah I'm not too happy about the placement of that Volume 1 logo there. The new Warriors Volume 1 which I did for Mr. Omar. I've got the Oz Omnibus which I think is very underrated, it's got some great Scott Young art throughout it. Punisher by Garth Ennis, again I did a review of that one. Can't lie guys, I am dying at the minute, it's so warm in here so yeah, let's just get for the rest of this video, but if it sounds like I'm losing my train of thought, it's because I am. Both volumes of Punisher Max by Garth Ennis, I can't wait to give that a reread now that I've read the first volume. Punisher Max by Jason Aaron, one of my favourite books, I think it made it quite high in my list of one and done Marvel omnibuses. Scooting along here now, we've got the Punisher by Rick Remender, which is something that Shadowcat surprised me with. Thought I was never going to get that book. And I know this should probably be at the front, but again, it's just space saving. I've got the Punisher Back to the War Omnibus. You're probably wondering why this entire row is shifted to the front, but it's because of the fact that behind here, I've got all the rest of the volumes of the Deadly Hands of Kung Fu and also the Shang-Chi Master of Kung Fu. Volume 1's right there. This is a series that I know at some point I'm going to want to read. I just don't want to read it at the minute. And for me, I'd rather buy it whilst it's in stock at a price that I can enjoy it for than wait until the moment when I do want to read it and then have to hunt it down and pay well over cover price. So at the minute, because there was just that many volumes, I have pushed it just behind Shang-Chi, but you know, it's still represented here on the shelf. But before that, we have got the Secret Invasion Omnibus, which again, I got in that Amazon Germany sale a few years ago, along with Secret Warriors, which was a bit of a grail of mine, but I'm glad that I've got that now. I've got the Silver Surfer Volume 1 by Steve. Stan Lee. Some really classic stuff. I think I only read the first couple of issues when I was way younger, so glad that I got that on my shelf. She-Hulk by John Byrne, which I still need to jump into, along with She-Hulk by Dan Slott. Looking forward to reading some of that before the TV show comes out. Then we move into some of my Spider-Man books. So first up, I've got the Untold Tales of Spider-Man. Thanks again to JP over Organic Price Books for sending that to me. Like I said, make sure that you check them out. There's an affiliate link in the description. And another book that was generous enough to send to me was the Spider-Man by Roger Stern. We then got the very whammy boys that admittedly some of them probably could have been pushed to the back but I just like the amount of Spider-Man that's here I just think it's great seeing it all there so starting off I've got the two volumes of the Clone Saga and the two volumes of Ben Riley. I've also got Craven's Last Hunt which admittedly should have been before Clone Saga but again space. Did a review with that quite recently and I've also got a Batman figure there that just annoys me and I'm probably just going to end up throwing that in the bin and it just winds me up the more I think about it so I'm just going to move on here because I've got the Spider-Man by J JMS, both volumes there. I think I've only ever read pretty much the first half of the first volume when it was coming out in trade paperbacks and also the one more day part so I'm excited to read the rest of that. Then we move on to picking up where the trade paperbacks left off because we've got the Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man and also the Spider-Man Miles Morales Omnibuses. It's going to be great when Marvel's finally printed all of the Ultimate Spider-Man and Omnibus and there's just one complete run. I am really looking forward to that. Then we move into some Star Wars books. I've got Star Wars by Jason Aaron and as you can see here I've got the Star Wars by Kieran Gillen and I've also got the Star Wars by Charles Soule deluxe editions. Not sure if I want to upgrade to the omnibuses, I kind of like the way it looks on the shelf at the mini but you know, I'm a bit of a hypocrite, so we'll see. I've also got Star Wars Doctor Aphra, which again, JP was kind enough to send me, along with the Thunderbolts Volume 1, and I'm very excited that Volume 2's been announced. It's a bit difficult to get to here just because of where the desk is, but again, sacrifice to win. I've got the Thor by Walter Simonson Omnibus, a very whammy boy, and I've also got both volumes of Thor Heroes Return, but the second volume has been pushed to the back just so that I can make more space, and now all my Thor Omnibuses are contained in the same part. So next to that, one of the biggest whales for the longest amount of time for me was the Thor by J. Michael Straczynski and that was a book that I had to sell because I just didn't have a lot of money at the time so being able to get that again is really great because it means that you know I'm in a different situation now so that was a great moment when I managed to pick that one off. Now moving into the last row I've got the Ultimate Omnibus very underrated series by Mark Miller, The Uncanny Avengers by Rick Remender along with The Uncanny X-Force, one of my favourite reads of last year we've got Venom volumes 1 and volume 2 and I've got the War of the Kings Omnibus now, the Road to War of the Kings and the War of the Kings Aftermath 
or just behind I pushed them to the back just for the time being but next to that is one of the whammiest boys in the collection it's the War of the Realms Omnibus now this one's a bit hypocritical but next to that I've got the all new Wolverine now it's next to the Wolverine section and admittedly it could just go here but it's technically A but it's also a Wolverine so I compromised and just put it at the start of the Wolverine books but know me as soon as this is finished I'm probably going to end up moving that so don't worry too much about that one but that is the beautiful direct market variant for that book I've then got a flat spined Wolverine volume 1 which I'm probably going to be really annoyed about when I get that volume 2 it hasn't got a flat spine Wolverine by Mark Miller which has got the old man Wolverine stuff that I really enjoy then we've got the three volumes of Wolverine by Jason Aaron very happy to have all of them in my collection even if it is that Wolverine and the X-Men is now getting a reprint admittedly though I can't fully remember if I got them in the correct order I don't know if they go in a different order so just let me know in the comments section if it's wrong okay so I had to pause the filming because the battery ran out and I was really close to the end but you know it's a different day I have to wait until the light outside and by light I mean the sun is up because at the minute the light in the comic room is broken so obviously I've got the softbox lights but if there's any issues that's the reason why I'm trying to get it fixed I've actually got an empty cube I like to try and conserve as much space as I can when I get that opportunity to but the minute I've got the Marvel Legends Juggernaut and Colossus here I've posed them as best as I can but honestly I have no luck when it comes to posing figures as you've probably seen from some of my Power Rangers now moving into the next cube this is where we start getting into my X-Men and I've got my white Magneto there just guarding the books starting it off I've got X-Men Classic I feel like that's the correct placing for that book but for just move my Magneto along you can see there that I've got volumes 1 to 4 of the Uncanny X-Men which I'm really excited about because of the fact that I originally had volumes 1 and 2 but before I could properly read anything more than Dark Phoenix I had to sell them just because like I said with the Thor book it was just a bad situation for myself so I'm really glad that Marvel reprinted those and continued with the series so that I could finally bring them back into the collection. Then we've got one of my favourite events that I read growing up, X-Men Mutant Massacre. Really glad that you guys are getting the chance to get the reprint of that. Like I said, make sure that you pre-order it from Organic Price Books and use code WOOFWOOF in the link in the description. Then we've got my Dazzler Spine X-Men by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee Volume 1. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I really don't like that spine, but I much preferred the original cover than the DM variant because I just didn't like the widescreen aspect of the variant and that is just a fantastic cover right there and just as we've been filming the blue dino thunder ranger has fallen over now moving it into the next block i know that this isn't chronologically correct but i've got x-men by chris claremont and jim lee volume 2 really like the magneto that's on the spine there i've then got x-men inferno which i do believe should have gone in front of chris claremont and jim lee but just for space that was where it made the most sense for inferno to go but obviously we're getting that companion omnibus and we're also getting a companion reprint for the book that's next to it the age of apocalypse i love this book when i read it and i'm starting to think of doing a series maybe once or twice a year where when it's coming up to summer i will read an event comic because obviously summer's always about big blockbuster events so i think that'd be quite interesting to do and i'd really like to revisit age of apocalypse because i got through this book even though it's a whammy boy but admittedly i can't remember too much besides the fact that i did enjoy it next to that we've got grant morrison's new x-men which i know is out of print for a lot of people and hopefully there's a reprint soon i've then also got my original printing of the astonishing x-men it was either this or captain america by ed brubaker that was the first omnibus that i brought that really made me fall in love with the format i just absolutely love this book love this cover i know that joss whedon's not exactly the greatest person but this book is still it, it just stands the test of time for me and i definitely recommend it to anybody that's trying to get into x-men then we've got x-men grand designs a really fun and enjoyable book and I'm glad that I got the omnibus so that I can read the second series and the third one I've only read the first part of that one of the most underrated Marvel comics Young Avengers by Alan Heinberg I'm really kicking myself that I never got the children's crusade now the final cube that I've got here is all of my Conan books so far except for obviously the Jason Aaron one that was in the main section these are all double stacked I've gone with the original cover for pretty much all of these as you can see here but behind them and I know that this is going to be blasphemous but it's mainly because of space i have got the as you can see 
through there just about. We've got the Kubu Seek Omnibus, and then we've got the Colossal Conan the Sumerian, the Colossal King Conan, and we've also got the Dynamite Edition of the Gale Simone Red Sonya. Admittedly, for me, I love my Colossal Conans, but I'm always kicking myself because of the fact that I don't have the first volume. So I'm keeping them there until the day that I do eventually get the Colossal Conan and I can display them all together. They're probably going to get their own shelf. Like, eventually, I would love it to be the case that I can just do a full Conan shelf but because there was a colossal King Conan but from the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie statue because I'd love to have it that I've got as one bookend I've got like a young Conan kind of like the one that you see here and then bookending it the other side with a complete run of Conan books we would have the Conan on the throne kind of giving us that complete journey that's that's my dream for the collection but I had somebody ask me about this and I'll just touch on it briefly this is my setup it's nothing too extreme I don't really understand gaming PCs or anything like that I've got some wireless bow headphones that I also use for the gym we've got my daredevil pvc statue which shadow cat got me I just really like having there I've got a cool light from dwell it looks really fancy and of course because lightning collection doesn't seem to want to give us any more time force yet I've got the boy himself time force red wes the computer that I use for my editing is an iMac and I also use premiere pro and adobe photoshop to get all my editing and thumbnails done this is my book that I wrote called fool girl I'm currently trying to read it because I want to get it published and I want to get it published traditionally I don't want to go down the self publishing route because I'm not really too sure how I'd go about that and I'm not really sure how I'd market it but if you want to read the first 10 chapters of this I will leave a link in the description down below the astonishing Melanie's currently reading it and she's loving it so I'm quite happy with that and the microphone that I use is the Blue Yeti Pro. Now to just briefly touch on the Power Rangers because I might have some Power Rangers fans that are watching this I am hoping that there's at least a few and it's not just me. Starting this off we've got my complete figure arts for Go Kaiji. I love these. I've also got Go Kai Silver right there and I've also got the Go Kai Galleons for all five ranges which were exclusive and getting pink and yellow were very difficult. So this is the prize of my collection when it comes to figures at the moment. I've also got a Decca Red there. I know I've got a Lightning Collection SPD Red but Ban was my favourite character. Decca Ranger was also the first Sentai that I watched. I love this character and just have him posing in his henching form. I just need that. I do wish I could have got the other figures for that team, but they never did stuff like Doggy Kruger and Decker Break for Zoo Ranger, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as they're more formally known across here. I absolutely love this team. And I've got them posed in this way because it means that if the Green Ranger is there, then this is Zack and this is Trini because that is the way that the Power Rangers are to me. No disrespect to Adam and Aisha, but for me, that is the way the Power Rangers are. That's the way that I see them. So that's why I've got them posed in this way. And I've also got the Tyranno Red with the Dragon Shield. And just behind them, I have got the Key Ring Rangers, which were special monogram summer convention exclusive. I don't even know what that convention is, if I'm honest with you, but I just like having them behind there, even if the Rangers aren't posed in the correct way. Then just some more Lightning Collection bad guys. But yeah, I've got a Lightning Collection Lord Zed and Goldar, but the one with the wings. I've got a Lightning Collection White Ranger, just because I liked having it posing next to Lord Zed right there. I've also got the Black Ranger with the Dragon shield which I've just put here because I liked it there. I never really managed to get the figure arts of that one but I'm happy enough with the lightning collection. That character only appeared in one episode. I've then got two of the lightning collection morphers just going to move the black ranger there. So this is lightning collection. This is lightning collection and this was an import from Japan. I absolutely love these three morphers. I actually almost wish that I would have brought another four of these so that I could post each one with a coin but you know you live and learn. I just didn't have the money for it back then as well. There isn't like an auto focus on this lens so I'm just going to try and get that sorted for you there but we've got a lord dragon evolution one along with the ranger slayer i'm looking forward to them doing more of the boom characters and i like that we're going to get the red ranger sentries and i can't wait to get two of them because like i said i'm going to pose them next to my lord dragon evolution three and i'm going to see if i can try and get a throne and really do like a nice set piece i do kind of want one of those big glass cabinets that you see people have and maybe putting all my power rangers in there but the mini it's just space that i've got to think about then we move down to the power rangers zeo love this team gold ranger is one of my favorite designs ever then we move to in space my second favorite team after time force because astronomer is the most 
difficult character to pose that I've ever had in toy form besides maybe that Batman Arkham figure. She's just sitting down at the moment, sitting there thinking about what she's done because you know, if you can't stand on your own two feet, that's what you're gonna have to do. Psycho Rangers absolutely love them and I love that we're getting a Psycho Silver soon. I do wish that I could get me hands on a Psycho Green but over here in the UK, it is quite difficult to get. The Lost Galaxy Rangers and I have got the next wave pre-ordered so I will be getting SPD Green along with Lost Galaxy Blue and also In Space Black but just got them two ranges there for now. Um, I don't know what I'm going to pose when I get them all. I'm half tempted to make like a little rock with all five of the swords and the ranges behind them so that it's kind of like the way that it was in the pilot episode. We then got my Dino Thunder ranges. I tried to pose them originally the way that they were in the final episode just before the final battle but then Blue Ranger decided to fall over. Admittedly as much as I like Time Force and I want a complete set of Time Force ranges I would like them to complete some sets first so I'd be pretty comfortable with them bringing out yellow and black Dino Thunder before maybe be some more time force just so that we can have that complete team we've got the spd set do still need to get me hands on spd blue and a squad blue but for now i've got the omega ranger on his cycle i've got spd pink spd red and for some reason i only ever call him doggy kruger because of deca ranger i can't actually remember what they called that character in the tv show which pretty bad on my part but that was my collection tour for this year that is the complete dog pound and like i said hopefully this time next year i might be in a bigger property and i can find get the collection posed in the way that I want it to be but I'm hoping that you've enjoyed it like I said if you want to pick up any books check out our sponsor organic price books in the description down below share this video where you can give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you didn't why did you get this far if you're new to the channel definitely subscribe but until next time just make sure that you stay safe stay reading the best books that you can find and stay mad all you dogs woof woof see you at the next video